So it's a historic time in Saudi Arabia. Women here finally hitting the road from Riyadh and across the country. Over 120,000 women have already applied to get their licenses. I had the chance to catch up with a few of them. Let's take a listen. Today, women in Saudi Arabia can finally drive. I am very, very happy. It's just the latest move by the country's crown prince to transform a traditional society into a 21st century economy. Saudi Arabia has come a very long way, actually. Uh, right now, with the new Vision 2030 that we have in place, uh, with the His Royal Highness uh, announcement two years ago, uh, we've seen things accelerating significantly. But today, Saudi women make up just 22 percent of the country's total labor force, with the government hoping to boost those numbers to 30 percent by 2030. And while the government hopes that putting women behind the wheel will finally cut down on an over-reliance on foreign labor, they also hope it means added economic opportunity. Regional ride-sharing service Kareem was one of the first companies to get on board, aiming to sign up as many as 20,000 female drivers by 2030. You decided to become a captina for Kareem? Yeah. Why? Why not? Because I can do it. Women have been ready for that challenge for quite some time. Um, because women have been, they're slowly integrated into, this, in, into the workforce. And by workforce, I, I, I also mean just, um, I mean, in, every, in every, every field, you see women now. It's breaking down barriers, isn't it? It is. And while those rapid reforms have finally put women in the driver's seat, Questions remain over how quickly the Saudi vision can deliver. Now, all of this is, of course, all in line with His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's Vision 2030. That's, of course, an attempt to diversify, to diversify this country's economy away from oil. And, of course, the question, of course, going forward is going to be how quickly are they going to move on this? There are a lot of questions still to be decided in terms of women, their rights, whether or not they're going to actually be able to travel on their own. And, of course, the, the guardianship lies that we've been talking about so much, whether or not those are going to eventually be lifted. But the folks that I'm speaking to here, guys, are so positive positive on these developments, so we'll just have to wait and see. Hadley, it's going to do great things, I would think, for their productivity levels, right? I mean, if a woman doesn't have to now wait for somebody to drive her and she can drive her herself, it's, it makes it much easier for her to decide that she's actually going to work because she can get there herself. I mean, economically speaking, this is no small feat. Oh, absolutely. And I think that we're going to see billions of dollars added to the economy ahead of this 2030 vision. And I think what's also very, very interesting is some of the folks that I've been speaking to, of course, they want to get on board here, not just in terms of driving themselves to work, but also becoming part of the sharing economy. We heard from the folks over at Kareem. They've already put women drivers on the road. Their closest rival here, of course, is Uber. They haven't managed to do that quite yet. But of course, this is something that's in the process that, you know, one of the things in Saudi Arabia that's quite tough is sometimes the regulations, they're not very clearly stated. You have to wait a while to figure out just exactly what's going on. There's a lot of noise on social media, but certainly this is something that the government and the regulators are very much behind. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.